I'm here at the Seattle Center where Elvis Presley came to town for his movie, It Happened at the World's Fair, which got a lot of great shots of the 1962 Expo that sort of put Seattle on the map. Elvis sang a song on the monorail. He had a meal at the top of the Space Needle, and he bought a Belgian waffle here for that annoying little kid that he was babysitting. Seattle had figured in the movies before. The 1933 hit, Tugboat Annie, for instance, was partly shot on the fragrant Seattle waterfront with the equally fragrant Wallace Beery and Marie Dressler starring. But it was only later that Seattle got a starring role in a lot of movies, and today we're gonna to check some of those locations and ponder the way Seattle's image has changed in the movies over the years. It was at the top of the Space Needle that Seattle had its most hair-raising cinematic moment, the beginning of Alan Pakula's 1974 film, The Parallax View, where Warren Beatty witnessed a political assassination at the top. In the 1970s, Seattle was sort of depressed and run down, and it served as an offbeat location for movies like Cinderella Liberty and a few visiting cop films. And when people think of cops in the 1970s, I'm sure they think of John Wayne and Connie Stevens. Well, it's not illegal if that's what you mean. The Duke played a Seattle detective who kept a boat down in Fremont and rousted some hippies at the J&M Cafe in Pioneer Square. You put up 10 grand to go bang on boiling me. You're insane! Yeah. And in the jaw-droppingly bad Scorchy, Connie Stevens is a sassy, saucy Seattle detective involved in some chase scenes that truly boggle the mind. Ed Wood couldn't have done it better. Well, maybe he could. The fascinating thing about these 70s films is that they show a Seattle that is long gone. They're really a time capsule of another era. I didn't get a chance to fight in the big one. In the 80s and early 90s, Seattle suddenly got kind of cool on film. It was here in the Pike Place Market that Jeff Bridges walked into the fabulous Baker Boys, a sultry movie that made Seattle look like it was full of cool jazz clubs where Michelle Pfeiffer might crawl on top of your piano. And at around that same time, the dark film noir visions of House of Games and Trouble in Mind helped create that image, too. Cameron Crowe helped put the place on the map with two youth movies, Say Anything and Singles, which captured, or possibly invented, a city of romance. Even more people saw the love story of Sleepless in Seattle, which gave Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan a reason to visit. In 10 Things I Hate About You, Heath Ledger went to a nearby high school and fell in love. This was the era when everybody in Seattle movies worked in the high-tech industry, drank a lot of coffee, and listened to new music. Seattle was hip, or at least Hollywood thought so. And there's one caveat to all this, which is that Seattle is frequently played by its stunt double in the movies the more economical Vancouver, B.C. In the last few years, local filmmakers have created their own Seattle on film, nowhere more evocatively than Police Beat, a film about a bicycle cop who passes through the city as a surreal but beautiful place. I wonder how Connie Stevens would fit in. Why am I at the University of Washington campus? Is it because they shot scenes from Black Widow here? Or because I once saw Matthew Broderick walking across Red Square for a scene from War Games? No, it was none of those things. Actually, I'm sure you've guessed by now that the reason we're here in the auditorium of Architecture Hall on campus is that this was the site of my own cinematic debut, the 1980 film, The Changeling. I was sitting right about here, and George C. Scott was down in front playing piano and teaching class. Well, actually, can we, can we look at a clip of that? It's my understanding that there are uh, 23 students registered <laughs> for this series of lectures on advanced musical form. Uh, we all know that it's not raining outside. And unless there's a fire in some other part of the building that we don't know about, 
An awful lot of people here with nothing better to do. <laughs> yep, there I am. It's clear as day. I'm, I'm right on the aisle there. Yes, we're surrounded by movie locations here. So the next time you're at the Seattle Asian Art Museum or the Elliott Bay Bookstore or the Underground Tours, keep in mind that Hollywood has visited. As for me, I think I'll hang around a while and see if anybody wants an autograph. Any, uh, any Changeling fans out here? 1980? Sitting on the aisle. Nobody? Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.